Hello there, Sarah from 17 once again. This is my Last of Us Grounded Difficulty video walkthrough. This is Chapter 7, The University. The final section aside, this is one of the easiest missions in Grounded. There's not really too much to do, in fact. It makes it kind of interesting. So this first area is a bunch of runners and a very noisy generator. On my previous walkthrough, I used the flamethrower and I just kind of bundled them all into the blast and they died. I picked up the flamethrower on this run and it doesn't start with nowhere near the same amount of ammunition to do that. And obviously, I'm trying to do um, this, this, this run with as little shooting as I could. And whenever you've seen me shoot, it's generally come from frustration or misfortune of, you know, just getting bummed, pretty much, in those areas. And this sequence here, what I was trying to do is I was trying to get away, I was trying to lure, sorry, these ones away from the rest of the pack. Because the two that are alert, the two runners moving around are the only threat. The ones that are all passive are easy to take out. Once you've got rid of the two runners, you can go in this room and choke the rest of them out. And you need to do this because if you don't, they'll just activate as you try and use the generator. It's, it's one of those strange moments where the game almost sets it up like you can stealth, but then stealthing is pointless. It's a little bit like in the sewers, not the sewers, sorry, the, the flooded basement of the Pittsburgh building. Where if you go to the generator before you've picked up the card in like the, the, the main office, as you're pulling the cord, you get killed by stalkers, you get attacked by all of them. And there's not really much you can do, especially on Grounded, if a stalker grabs you it's pretty much game over. But before that, the game has been really passive and really quiet, so it makes it seem like there's there's no threat. And then as soon as you try and do that prematurely, you get murdered. And it's the same here. You get to the generator, you activate it, and all of these will just wake up and kill you. So the strategy here is pretty simple. Grab them, kill them, and then activate the generator. But this is the last third of the game. Uh, we're moving towards two of the toughest levels. Winter is by far, in my opinion, the toughest chapter on a traditional playthrough. Uh, on grounded mode, I found Pittsburgh to be tricky because I had a lot of difficulty with that massive courtyard fight when Ellie's covering you. I think that's probably the toughest part of the game. And it stems merely from the point that you can't control it. And any situation you can't control means that at any point it can go wrong, it can go badly, and you can't learn from it because the next time you attempt it, it's completely different. And that is why I will always prefer moments like this, because you can formulate a strategy that will work every time you play. And I do believe that that other AI and that other way that that game works is it's probably the future of, of AI and the future of game scripting moving towards a more progressive and a more random design. And there's a part of me that kind of fears that, because as much as I do enjoy the spontaneity and the freshness of mixing it up, it makes it incredibly difficult when you're trying to do anything remotely instructional. I suppose on the flip side, walkthroughs will probably turn into, you know, really in-dip, in-dip, not even a word, in-depth analysis of things, analyses, I have no idea how you say that. Because people will be going over probability scales and, you know, this is what can happen, this is what can happen this way, this is when this happens and that happens. And, you know, it probably leads to more interesting videos, but as it stands, it, it makes it tricky to, to get something that can work every time. But here is the flamethrower and this is the end of this first sequence. So it should be crossfading shortly into the next one, which is just stealthing through some bedrooms, dodging some infected. Another very simple section. And a lot of people have been leaving comments, you know, should I play Grounded? You know, is it really going to challenge me because I thought Survivor was pretty simple? My answer for that's completely subjective, really. I think the game will challenge you because I think that there are certain areas that you found easy on Survivor that you won't find so easy on Grounded. That being said, though, is this going to challenge you like some games challenge you? No, it's not. The difficulty was complete hyperbole. The difficulty in this game is comparative to the difficulty in a Souls game. It is the developer and word of mouth people saying that it's impossible, and it's not. It's just a lot of people are not very good at video games, and they tend to be the ones who are the loudest, and unfortunately, there's plenty of forums full of that bullshit where instead of 
you know, this is hard, let's figure it out. You get, this is impossible, I'm quitting. And it's infectious, that mentality of, of cowardice, which is why I like making videos such as this, where I can show you that you don't have to be, you know, insanely committed to The Last of Us or insanely skilled at the game to get through it. You just have to, you know, persevere and figure it out. And it can be fun. Like that just was. As I press mash button and it takes me off the thing. <laughs> But the difficulty here is, the checkpoints they've changed is is definitely going to change the way you play some some sections. The AI and how it is kind of more random than it's ever been is always going to change how you play some things. But for the most, it's going to be completely down to how you play. Are you the person who, you know, always has ammo, always miss, always hits their shots, always stays on top of everything? And you'll probably have no issue. You'll notice I'm shooting as well. This part is frustrating, and it's frustrating because there's a lot of enemies, and they seem to come out of nowhere, and once again, the checkpoint is way further back than I would like it to be. So, at the beginning, I'm shooting a lot. It's just the way it is. I tried to stealth this for a decent amount of time. I had a lot of success, but I kept getting caught when you go through the doors from this room. So I just decided to, let's do this. You know, if we're going to throw down, let's really throw down. So pull out some guns, thin some numbers, and start shooting. And I've got to say, I do think this game is a hell of a lot of fun with the guns. I also must add that trying not to use them is also really fun too. So it's, if you want to bring more life into The Last of Us, try playing it a little differently than you normally do. I was surprised just how fun and challenging it was to play it out of my comfort zone. So... It's definitely worth checking out, but we should be able to get this guy. Always be aware that when you choke somebody, Joel takes like three steps backwards. And sometimes you can he can move you out into the open, which is incredibly frustrating. But this game is heavy on its animations, and the animation is top priority in everything. So you need to be aware of it. Also, be aware that the spawns here are once again kind of interesting as you push up towards the door that leads into the next room there's a spawn of a few guys that come through it you can probably molotov them if you want to but i wanted to save my molotovs and then later on when you go down some stairs after you've cleared this area out there's another spawn as you're mid running you'll trip it and they'll run around the corner and they ambush you and if you don't know it's coming it's one of the the biggest run enders i've had in this particular sequence but there's just this guy now, patrolling, doing his thing. I've got a break. This should be over quite quickly. I've also got a machete too. And the cool thing is, the first two dudes I killed, one of them has a weapon. So if you use your melee weapon, you can always swap it to the one that he had. Because, as you see, there's a tomahawk just there. Which is pretty cool. Always good to have one of those one-hit kill weapons. I wish you could... You know, keep them alive somehow. Like, there's a lot of salvaging on this game, but I don't think they took it half as far as they could have. You know, look at all the shit in the environment. It would have been awesome if you could have MacGyver stuff. And I'm not asking for it to be easy to do. I would have liked it to take, you know, taken a lot of skill and, and knowledge of what to combine to make things. But I also understand keeping things simple, because there's a lot of... Believe it or not, the simpler something is, the easier it is to for it to become, you know, a, a big thing. If you look at any of the great competitive games, they generally have really simple premises. They generally have, you know, simplistic gameplay in the terms of, of what is required of the player. And it's, it's more to do with execution and strategy than it is to do with people grasping how to do things. But this is that spawn I mentioned. It's one of those weird ones where everybody who turns up seems to know where the hell you are and they come for you mercilessly. So you just need to divide and conquer and hopefully you don't get unlucky like I was getting quite a lot here. Oh, and also have something worth throwing. If you can pick something up and throw it at somebody, you're winning. So there's a bottle. You picked it up through everything, which is an awesome mechanic. I love it. And here comes this guy who obviously knows where we are, but I'm having none of it. Down he goes. There's another bottle, grab it, crouch, wait for anybody else. 
And it's another one of those areas, just like the Hydro Dam, just like that area in Pittsburgh where the first spawn is set, the second spawn is random. They just come running in, they go where they want, it's it makes it kind of tricky. Because when you play, I guarantee it's not going to go down like this for you. So you just have to be aware of that and be aware that the checkpoints here are non-existent. If you die right now, you will go all the way back to running out of that room and those two fellas charging at you. So you'll notice I put a Molotov on here because I know what's coming. This caught me off guard a lot in my survivor walkthrough, so I'll always remember this. As soon as you get, I think it's midway down these next set of stairs, two dudes are going to bum rush you with guns. And I remember it fondly because they murdered me on my survivor recording. Like, I did that area brilliantly and then these two idiots just murked me, like, full on. And there's three of them in, in full, but the third guy, for some reason here, didn't chase. He stands with a gun on the other side of this, this door, like this archway thing that we're coming up against. See, no checkpoint, still on the same checkpoint here. And he won't move, he's already got his gun up, and because I don't really want to risk taking a bullet to the chest, I'm going to use the cover and shoot him in the face. Because, like, that dude is just raring to go. I don't think I use the Magnum, do I? Do I use the Magnum? Come on, Chris, use something small. There you go. And that is it. That is the end of that level. There is a little bit after that, but it's very simple to do. It's not very intensive on the player, so I've not added it. But thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in winter, arguably the toughest part of the game for a lot of people. And as always, you take care now.